Okay, today we're going to learn the dominant sevens. We like I think I taught you like the structure of dominant sevens, right? Yep. Give me one example of dominant sevens, please. Um, can you see C major for example? C major. Okay. So, um, it start with C D E F G G, G B uh -huh. D F. Okay, good. And this is dominant sevens, right? Yep. Okay. So. Today we're gonna to focus on the inversions, okay? Okay. And just want to clarify with you. The inversions, like the dominant sense, we have two versions, like two forms. One completed, one incompleted, right? But okay. inversions, they never have an incompleted. Okay? Do you understand what I'm saying? Yep. Because if you're missing one key or one note, they don't know what kind of chord it is. Ah, okay. You can't, you can't like, okay, is it like 6? Is it sub medium? Or is it like 4? Is it sub, sub dominant? They can't be like so uh, like embarrassed to figure it out, okay? Okay. So we don't see inverters should be all notes present, so you at least have two. So actually four, sorry, four notes, okay? Okay. And so first inverters, we put the G upper one octave, which is a B. D, F, G, okay? Okay. And the uh, chords, see this one. So from B to F, it's a 1, 2, 3, 4, what kind of degree? Like, I think 5. It's a 5, good. And the, the B to the top one is a... Uh, it's a 7, wait, no, never mind. So uh, B to F is 5th. B to G is 6. Yeah. So that's why we have this number. So it's a dominant 6 5. Oh! Of 5 6 5. That's how we write it down as functional symbols. Okay? And I'm guessing it's next one 5 4. 5 4. Okay. Could be. Okay, next one I'm going to do just invert this B upper to one multiplier. So it's D, F, G, B, right? Oh, okay. Is it, is it too, too high for you? I'm gonna... Not really. So D, F, G, B. Or... Yeah. Question, why is, the B on, why is the B on the G side but not the F side? Why the G on... You mean like this? No, I mean the upper B. Oh, B? Yeah. You think of this one? Yeah, yeah. this one. Oh, that's this good. That's okay too. Yeah, this one. This one? No, oh, this one. It's okay. <coughs> but the thing is, for this one, you said this one should be a 5-4, right? Yeah, I'm guessing. Okay. How you say it? Why is it 5-4? Um, so which one is 5? I don't know, because I'm not sure. So it is a dominant 7, and then the next you said is... Oh, you, you use the numbers to like eat, like delete one in minus yep. one? Then, okay. Wait, actually, never mind. I'm guessing the next one is four, three, because seven, six, five, four, three. Yeah, sorry. this one is better. Why do you have four, three? It's not to use like a mathematics thing, okay? It's just <laughs> like. So D to F is a. Um, three. Yeah. D, E, F. D, E, F. Sorry. And D to G is a. Oh, four. So that's why they have four, three. They are not like doing, okay, I minus one, minus one, and then I got the following. Okay. So. Okay. So the third inverted. Just one second. The third one is. Two, three. Wait, actually, never mind. Wait, let me count. Um, F to G is a two, and then F. Two B is a four. Mm -hmm. So is it four two? Yes. This one got it right. Yes. So but this one is not a pattern. So this one because the uh, they have a upper interval which is a four, so that's why the top number is four. And the lower interval is a three and two. So that's why it's four, three, four, two. It's not minus one, okay? It's not minus one. You can use this one as memorizing to help you to like memorizing the numbers, but not like it's not the way they calculate. Okay. okay. And as I said, it all the notes should be present. If because for example, if I eliminate this one, 
it will be BDF, right? Yeah. So in C major, what's a BDF? Uh, in C major, BDF is uh, dominant. B. Wait, never mind. It's seven. Yeah, it's seven in. Is it seven six or seven in root uh, position? Seven in root position. We said it before, seventh is a one, like the latest stable degree, and we seldom, seldom, seldom use it, except some uh, like special events, okay? So this one, you mm, pretty much you will not see it, okay? Okay, so that's why you need to you need to get the, all the notes present. Do we only use seven in the sequence? Oh yeah, seven in the sequence. So what's the sequence called? Do you remember? Uh, I see. I think it's called. It started D. Uh, D S C. Uh, I remember. I kind of remember how to spell it. <laughs> but okay. I how, to, how to say it? So D S. Oh, D descending fifth. Descending fifth. So what's called? Why is it called descending fifth? Because they go. Because. Uh, so they are the down fifths, upper fourths, down fifths, upper fourths. Okay. okay. Anyway, so this one you will only see in the descending fifth sequence. Other than that, pretty much you know you're not gonna see it for anywhere. Okay, so remember this three inverges because every single time you're gonna use it for the dominant sevens, okay? Okay. And they have same function as a dominant sevens, so which is like they can use in the cadence. And they can use as a maybe usually dominant sevens is pretty much a cadence because that means we are going to end the piece or end the melody, like for phrase, okay? Okay. And this is how we say. Remember, we we have a thing for how to resolve all dominant sevens. How do you resolve dominant seven to one? To one, yeah. Yeah, I remember. So the seventh. So in this case, is G B D F. Okay, which one? Can I write it down? Yeah, you can write it down. So in C major, mm -hmm. there's G, B, mm -hmm. D, mm -hmm. F, mm -hmm. and so to solve one. So which one, which key or which note should be go rises? Can I use the bass clef too? Yeah. Yay. 